You're just in time for one of the most important Bible Answer Man broadcasts to date. Today's Bible Answer Man is a rebroadcast of a recorded program. Your host for the Bible Answer Man is Hank Hanegraaff, president of the Christian Research Institute. The reason this broadcast is so monumental is that we're announcing the release of Hank's latest and many feel his greatest work. Hank wrote the Apocalypse Code out of his concern that much of the end-time speculation that is being touted today has led many down unbiblical or even dangerous paths. He'll explore this topic to help each of us understand what the Bible really has to say about the events surrounding Christ's return. Now, Hank, for a change, I'd like to turn the tables on you and ask you a question. Why did you title this book, The Apocalypse Code? Well, thank you, Randy, for that question. And for everybody that's joining us uh, around the United States and Canada, the answer to that question is I I actually toyed for a while with calling this book Exegetical Eschatology, but I discovered that... uh, that people had a hard time actually pronouncing that phrase until they got uh, used to it. And and then I, I took the phrase exegetical eschatology, and I rendered that easy to communicate in E squared. Uh, and in fact, I coined the phrase exegetical eschatology to begin with to underscore that above all else, I'm deeply uh, committed to a proper method of biblical interpretation rather than to any particular model of eschatology. And in the final analysis, then, my purpose was not to entice you to embrace a particular model of eschatology, but to employ a proper method of biblical interpretation. In other words, I wanted to put the tools in people's hands so that they could learn to read the Bible for all it's worth. I still remember a conversation I had with Lee Strobel about this, and he thought it would be very intriguing for people to read E squared on the cover of a book and say, uh, what's that? Uh, but we eventually decided on a saner route, which was to title the book The Apocalypse Code. And the idea actually came from a book uh, that was released in 1997 by Hal Lindsey uh, titled Apocalypse Code. And on the cover of that book, we were told that the father of the modern day prophecy movement actually had cracked the Apocalypse Code, that he had done something that no one had been able to do for over 1,900 years of church history. So for 1,900 years, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place, was shrouded in mystery until the moment came in the 20th century when the Spirit of the living God gave the prophet Hal Lindsey what he calls special insight. And that special insight was that the Spirit of God told Hal that what happened with the Apostle John is that he was transported, as it were, in a time machine through time travel from the first century to the 21st century. And on the edge of the 21st century, he saw some amazing things. As a first century man, he saw what would happen at the end of the world in the 21st century. And so, for example, he says that the Holy Spirit of God gave him special insight into Revelation chapter 9. Some of you will be familiar with that passage where you have locusts that look like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like woman's hair, and their teeth like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tails, they had the power to torment people for five months. Well, through special insight, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the prophet Hal said that he determined that the locusts were actually attack helicopters, and the crowns of gold were elaborate helmets that were worn by the helicopter pilots, and the woman's hair was the whirling propeller. So John is in the 21st century, and he sees helicopters, but he doesn't know how to communicate those helicopters 
and, and eventually he uses the word locust to communicate the helicopter. And he sees the whirling propeller, and he doesn't know how to communicate that. And he communicates that then in first century language as woman's hair. And he sees the the pilots with elaborate headgear, and he doesn't know how to communicate that. And he finally says, those are crowns of gold. And so here you have it through special insight and what I would call unbridled speculation and a subjective flight of fancy. Uh, he comes up with the code breaker to the book of Revelation. Well, exactly a decade later, I want to release the apocalypse code in hopes that you and multitudes like you will learn to read the Bible for all it's worth, not by unbridled speculation or the thought that the Holy Spirit gave you special insight, but rather to recognize that the real code breaker for the apocalypse of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place, is the Old Testament. We need to learn to read Scripture in light of Scripture. Uh, Two-thirds of Revelation's 404 verses allude directly to Old Testament passages, and I fear the reason we often can't make heads or tails out of them is that we have not sufficiently learned to read the Bible for all it's worth. And when our interpretations are tethered to the hottest sensation rather than to Holy Scripture, we are apt to grab at anything and usually miss. Now, the person I mention most frequently in the Apocalypse Code is Tim LaHaye, because the mantle of Hal Lindsey fell squarely on the shoulders of Tim LaHaye, and he takes great pains to emphasize that unlike what he calls the false teacher who traffics in the bizarre, he is deeply committed to the literal principle as conceived of in the dispensational mindset. In fact, he says that you cannot interpret Scripture other than understanding the dispensational system. If you don't know that system, which was, of course, invented in the 19th century, you can't interpret the book of Revelation. Now, as a result of this, we have a whole milieu of people who are now awaiting a rebuilt temple and reinstituted sacrifices. They are awaiting an Antichrist. And in the Left Behind series, you have an Antichrist named Nikolai Carpathia. And this Antichrist is able to do exactly what Christ did. In other words, like Christ, he had the power over earth and sky. And like Christ, he had the power to lay down his life and take it up again. So you have an antichrist with powers that are indistinguishable from the powers of Jesus Christ. Now, in a biblical worldview, antichrist can parody the work of Christ, but he can't do the work of Christ. And if Antichrist could rise from the dead, demonstrating his claim to deity, why not worship him? In fact, if Antichrist can rise from the dead, that means Satan has creative power. And if Satan has creative power, he could have masqueraded as the resurrected Christ. And now you lose epistemic warrant for the foundational idea in all of Scripture, the fact that Christ rose from the dead. So you're undermining both the resurrection and the deity, the unique deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. So ideas have consequences, and this idea, the idea that millions and millions of evangelicals are swallowing today, has a consequence. They believe in the very near future, and again, I'll quote Hal Lindsey here, in the very near future, we're going to have a holocaust for Jews in the Holy Land, that will make the Nazi Holocaust look like Girl Scouts waving a daisy chain by comparison. Not only that, but today we're going to have the embryonic stages of a rebuilt temple where the Dome of the Rock now stands, inflaming the fires of Armageddon. Imagine blowing up the Dome of the Rock and building a third temple there. And then on top of that, having to come up with the ashes of the red heifer to purify the grounds. 
and doing all kinds of things to come up with the ashes of the red heifer. Well, again, ideas have consequences, and he is saying, speaking of uh, Tim LaHaye, who has the mantle of Lindsay on his shoulders, he is saying that today he is writing uh, the wave of biblical literalism. He believes that you should read the Bible literally. And people like myself and the guests that we will have on over the next uh, two days, Stephen Sizer, Steve Gregg, Gary Burge, Dr. Paul Meyer, Gretchen Passantino, all are reading the Bible spiritually. But as my guest, Stephen Sizer, who is coming up in just a few moments, is fond of saying, the essence of the matter is not whether you take the Bible literally or spiritually. The essence of the matter is whether you understand the Bible in terms of old covenant types and shadows or new covenant realities. And with that, I want to welcome Stephen Sizer. He is the the author of Christian Zionism, and has blazed this trail with great dignity and courage, and it's a privilege to have you with us. Thank you for inviting me. Stephen, uh, I I was talking about this statement on your part. You sort of feel, as it were, that there's a shell game going on here in that uh, the dispensational mindset is we take the Bible literally, and those that do not take the dispensational models seriously are often spiritualizing Scripture, and you're saying that's really not the essence of the matter at all. No, I agree with you. It's, it's often we have to deal with the stereotypes that uh, are used to, to uh, criticize and condemn uh, those we disagree with, and that's what they're doing here. Um, it became a popular way of reading the Bible in the um, early 19th century as they tried to make sense of the radical changes taking place in the world. Um, uh, and it stuck that the uh, people like Hal Lindsey, Tim LaHaye, have perpetuated this notion that only they are interpreting the Bible literally. And those of us who disagree with their theological framework um, are liberal or uh, spiritualizing the text. The, the quote that you um, referred to about uh, shadow and substance is actually the, the words of the writers of the Hebrews. Um, you know, the book of Hebrews was written to help Jewish believers in Jesus understand that they must move on from animal sacrifices and keeping the law and um, being careful about what food they ate and so on, because they were now part of a wider uh, believing community of all races, and that they were not to go back. Um, and so it's the writer of the Hebrews who uses this concept of shadow and substance, that the the Old Testament types of land, uh, of, of city and kingdom and so on, were pointing to Jesus, and G- Jesus universalizes them to embrace all who will follow him, and frees us from the legalism uh, that often goes with um, those laws. And Jesus uh, makes it very clear that when he's talking about the temple, he is not talking about the temple as bricks and mortar or stones and mortar. He is talking about the living temple in their midst and the great failure of the first century Jewish people that saw Jesus in their midst is they wanted to continue worshiping in a temple. They wanted to continue the type and shadow when the reality stood before them. That's correct. That's correct. It's, it's the theology behind uh, Tim LaHaye's books and, uh, and Hal Lindsey is a very earthbound theology in which really Jesus is, is um, unnecessary. His, the cross is not central, however much they, they claim. I had a conversation with a colleague recently, and he was describing how their theology basically turns the church into the concubine of Christ. It's Gilbert Blazekian, you know, who helped found the Willow Creek Association with Bill Hybels. He told me recently that that theology turns the church into the concubine of Christ. Israel remains the true bride. And that goes against everything that Jesus taught and the New Testament teaches us. We're talking to Stephen Sizer. He is the author of Christian Zionism. He has blazed this trail, and he has written a uh, a wonderful endorsement for the book, The Apocalypse Code. I think it may well be the most significant book that the Lord will ever privilege me to write, and it is available to you right now through the ministry of the Christian 
Research Institute. All proceeds go to this ministry when you dial 888 cri You can also order the Apocalypse Code on the World Wide Web at equip.org or when you write me at Post Office Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28. Two seven one. Stephen Sizer is going to stay with me for just a few moments as we explore the whole idea of type and shadow versus the reality found in Jesus Christ on the other side of the break. We've got much, much more coming up. Again, you don't want to miss this edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast. Here's what Stephen Sizer penned about the Apocalypse Code. Quote, Hank Hanegraaff has done it again. What his Christianity in crisis did for Charismania, the Apocalypse Code will do for Armageddonites. Hank exposes how dangerous and destructive faulty exegesis really is, inviting not only bad theology but dangerous politics. And in this very readable book shows us all, from the young believer to the scholar, how to handle Scripture accurately and reverently and not be afraid of the apocalyptic Scriptures. Order your own copy of The Apocalypse Code today by calling 1-888-7000-CRI. If you enjoy catching up on your reading during the summer, then here's a great idea for an enriching, edifying summer. Call CRI and order Max McLean's Classics of the Christian Faith on CD and the Go Bible MP3 audio player. Both these resources are perfect companions for whatever plans you have this summer. Call us now to order Max McLean's Classics of the Christian Faith on CD and the Go Bible MP3 audio player. Call 888-7000-CRI or order them right now from your computer by going to www.equip.org. Stay with us. The Bible Answer Man will continue. The word is out. The Apocalypse Code is changing minds about the end times and changing lives. Thank you for writing The Apocalypse Code. I've just finished reading it. And I've been waiting for this book for 30 years. Many are discovering The Apocalypse Code by Hank Hanegraaff sheds the light of understanding into the murky haze of end times prophecy. I just bought The Apocalypse Code, and that one really has changed my way of thinking. It addresses today's most asked prophecy questions. But more than that, it reveals why answering them correctly matters so much in today's world. Let The Apocalypse Code unravel the mystery of current and future events and pave a path in scripture interpretation so you can read the Bible for all its worth. The Apocalypse Code by Hank Anagraf. Secure your copy right now. Call 888-7000-CRI. That's 888-7000-CRI. Look for it online at equip.org. The human heart. Its function is vital for our well-being, so we exercise it and take care of it. But the Bible often refers to the heart as the gateway and gauge of the soul. How do we take care of that? Research now supports the link between physical and spiritual health. In the pages of Total Heart Health for Men, Dr. Ed Young, along with two noted cardiologists, share that the key for men to have a truly healthy physical life is a healthy spiritual life. It's a stewardship issue that's crucial for men to address. And in our age of extreme makeovers, so much emphasis is put on the outer appearance. But in His Word, God is concerned about the health of the soul. Total Heart Health for Women is here to provide information and insights on how to speak to the unique spiritual aspects of a woman's heart. Total Heart Health for Men or Total Heart Health for Women by Dr. Ed Young. To order, call 888-7000-CRI or order online at equip.org. To paraphrase the Apostle John, blessed is the one who reads the Bible, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it. It's true, nothing makes the Scriptures come alive more than listening and reading it simultaneously. Now, bring your Bible study to a whole new level through both the eye gate and the ear gate. Hank is offering a special combination featuring the Legacy Study Bible together with the Go Bible audio player. Go Bible is a handheld MP3 audio player preloaded with the entire New King James Bible with a search feature that searches by book, by chapter, or even by individual verse. The Legacy Study Bible, edited by Hank Hanegraaff, features useful acronyms by Hank, including Legacy, Feet, and Lights. Together they make a powerful audio-visual presentation of God's Word. Get this special package of the Legacy Study Bible together with the Go Bible audio player for $139. To order, call 888-7000-CRI. That's 
toll-free at 888-7000-CRI. Find out more online at equip.org. You're listening to a very special installment of The Bible Answer Man as we introduce Hank's latest and possibly greatest work, The Apocalypse Code. The Apocalypse Code addresses today's most asked prophecy questions. But more than that, it reveals why answering them correctly matters so much in today's world. Yet, this book does not offer another model of the end times. Rather, it presents a method by which you can read the Bible for all it's worth. Secure your copy right now. CRI has made special arrangements so that you can get special quantity package discounts. Three copies will be sent to you for a gift of $49, and seven copies will be sent for your gift to CRI of $99. Call 888-7000-CRI. You'll also see it prominently on our website at www.equip.org. And now, let's find out how to understand the end times and the book of Revelation more fully. Here's Hank. Thank you very much, Randy. On the line, Stephen Sizer. Uh, he is the Vicar of Christ Church in Virginia Water uh, in the UK. He's the chairman of the International Bible Society, and he's the author uh, of Christian Zionism, Roadmap, or Armageddon. And in his endorsement to my book, uh, Stephen Sizer mentions that what I am doing in the book is not only exposing how dangerous and destructive faulty exegesis is, but points out how it uh, has a ramification with respect to bad theology, which leads to dangerous uh, politics. And Stephen, you first, I think, heard about me through Christianity in Crisis, which you uh, mentioned in your endorsement as well. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited about this new book that you've written, because it helps, um, as I said, both the young believer as well as uh, the mature believer to handle some of the most difficult passages of Scripture, which we leave to our peril to people like Hal Lindsay and Tib LaHaye to interpret on our behalf. Um, if we get them wrong and we start to uh, try and interpret the contemporary newspapers in the light of those passages, we end up with some very dangerous theology, and we're seeing uh, a lot of that panning out at the moment with regard, for example, to Iran. Uh, my own country, as well as yours, is facing up to Iran at the moment in a very dangerous way. And it's the Christian Zionists who are pushing us toward uh, a conflict situation. It's very dangerous, both for Iranians and for us. And I don't think it's warranted from the scriptures themselves. Well, let's cash that out for a moment. Uh, we're going to be talking to Dr. Gary Burge about this in tomorrow's show as well. But I think it's important to recognize, as you mentioned, the president of Iran wants a one-state solution in the Middle East, and that one-state solution involves uh, Palestinian Arabs. And we have a similar situation with Christians in the United States who have stood on the steps of the Capitol pointing their finger at Condoleezza Rice and George Bush and saying to the extent that we support a uh, two-state solution in the Middle East, we're poking our finger in the eye of God. And so these people, these evangelicals, they want a one-state solution too, but they want that one-state solution to be a one-state solution composed of Israelis only. And the reason, Stephen, is that they believe that God divides people on the basis of race. That's correct. They take the promises... Uh you'll find uh, in in Genesis particularly, and they apply them exclusively to the Jews. When we find uh, in the New Testament particularly the promises about uh, chosenness, about uh, being part of the people of God uh, and and serving him, are extended to all races. As we know from Ephesians, Jesus has, has broken down the wall of division between Jews and Gentiles, and through faith in in our Lord Jesus, we have reconciliation with God and one another. And it, it really grieves me that, uh, that some of so-called Christian leaders are perpetuating uh, this concepts of conflict and animosity between the races, which Jesus came to break down. 
And we ultimately have a, a lot of consequences in macro issues with respect to the historic Christian faith. How do we view Jesus Christ? Was his focus on land? Was his focus on a rebuilt temple? Was his focus on Jerusalem, or was his focus on a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride, beautifully adorned for her husband, and a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men? In other words, Jesus was not concerned with the old Jerusalem and the land, except as a center from which we would leave to propagate the gospel throughout all nations. So the land was not the focus of the Lord. The Lord was the locus of the land. And if we don't understand this, as you've pointed out, Stephen, we are in danger of trampling on the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as the writer of Hebrews makes clear. Yes, I mean, the writer to the Hebrews warns uh, his hearers that if they go back to the temple, which was still standing Uh, when he wrote it, and go back and start to offer sacrifices again. They are literally re-crucifying Jesus all over again. Uh, Jesus called his disciples to leave Jerusalem, to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. He never told them to come back. When he spoke to Pilate, um, he said, My kingdom is not of this world. It's not worldly, it's not materialistic, and it certainly isn't focused on... Um, on uh, the contemporary state of Israel, the mandate for us as believers is to share the reconciling work of Jesus with all races, both Jews and Arabs, Muslims, Gentiles, uh, and, and God calls us as his followers to serve him and make him known, not to be afraid of the future, and, and certainly not to be afraid of the very scriptures which you uh, so wonderfully um, elucidate in your book. You, you've, you've not just given us um, a commentary on how to handle the book of Revelation. You've given us the tools to have confidence to, to handle some of the other uh, parts of Scripture, like Ezekiel and Daniel and some of the other prophets, which are also uh, dealing with um, apocalyptic and... Uh, you know how we interpret the future, but it all comes down back down to Jesus, and and uh, if He's central in our theology, in our faith, in our lives, in our heart, then we can have confidence that the future is one where He is in control. Uh, that this there isn't this uh, worldly um, political battle going on in the world between God's side and the Americans and the British are on His naturally. And, uh, and the whole Arab world and Islam and so on is on the other. Uh, it's, it's a very dangerous theology that reduces the world down to uh, the cowboys and the Indians, if you like. Speaking with Dr. Stephen Sizer about my book, The Apocalypse Code, which is available to you right now when you give us a call at 888-7000-CRI or order online at equip.org. You can also order when you write me at Post Office Box 8500 Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. Stephen, I think it's fair to say that God is not pro-Jew, he is pro-justice, he's not pro-Palestinian, he's pro-peace, and that we as Christians should do everything we can to see that our brothers and sisters in the promised land, who are in many cases Arab Christians, aren't treated as though they are on a lower footing because of the particular DNA they have or the blood running through their veins. That's correct. That's, that, I agree wholeheartedly with that. The Scriptures teach us to uh, identify with the poor, the marginalized, the widows, the orphans, the prisoners, um, uh, the, the, the hungry, the homeless, and their race shouldn't matter to us. You know, the parable of the Good Samaritan is all about a man who was on a road, who was, who'd lost his dignity, he'd lost his, uh, his consciousness, his clothes. He was a human being. And the conundrum was, was he one of ours or one of theirs? Um, should we side with him uh, and help him or ignore him? And Jesus was trying to get across the idea, no, he's created in the image of God, and you care for him, and if you care for him, you have the compassion of God. I was thinking today of, of uh, Joshua, you know, when he was t- taking over the reins of God's people from Moses. 
and he is confronted with uh, either the pre-incarnate Christ or, or an angel, and he says, are you on our side or their side? And the angel says, neither. <laughs> I'm on the Lord's side. And that's where we need to be, not taking sides other than with whoever is being marginalized or, uh, or abused. We should stand on the side of, of peace, reconciliation, and that will only come when we stretch out to hurting people on both sides, be they white and black or Jew and Arab um, or Christian and Muslim, and show them in our words and in our actions that God loves them, he died for them, and that through faith in him we can be reconciled both to him and one another. Let me capitalize for a moment on the phrase you used uh, when you talked about marginalization. Uh, We as Christians in many cases are being marginalized ourselves in the media, and we've brought this on ourselves by the way that we read Scripture. Uh, We have, for example, the idea of a rust-colored calf, which has been compared in the media uh, to the idea in the Islamic world that if you blow yourself up, uh, your reward is going to be 72 black-eyed virgins in, in heaven. Well, we're also marginalizing ourselves in the sense that we believe that there's got to be a child that's raised who is ceremonially clean, and that might even take having double arches uh, under a dwelling that's raised off the land so that this person can grow up for 20 years or whatever long uh, it, it takes for them to become a priest so they can be ceremonially clean. And then you have the ashes of a red heifer, and the ashes of the red heifer then are, are used to cleanse the temple ground so that you can have temple sacrifices again and so forth. And the world looks on at this and says, my goodness, if this is how Christians read Scripture, they are indeed a dangerous lot. Your comment. I agree. I agree. I think we've, we've, we've caricatured the faith by our uh, wooden literalism that um, takes promises from the Hebrew Scriptures, applies them today as if Jesus uh, was an irrelevancy. You know, the Church was a parenthesis in God's continuing Uh, purposes. It it makes a mockery of the Christian faith, and it makes skeptics and doubters uh, find it harder to believe, especially when they see it seems to fuel hatred um, and uh, and, and, and opposition to values that most people hold dear. You know, we hold very dear uh, some of the basic freedoms we have, the freedom to speak, the freedom to travel, the freedom to express ourselves, to get married, to uh, to raise a family, we 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 cherish these values, and yet we deny them to uh, peoples. Uh, I mean, I went to see the, uh, the film Amazing Grace last night, the story of um, William Wilberforce and how he helped to bring an end to the slave trade, and it was shocking to see religious leaders of his day justifying slavery in the name of God. Uh, it's not that long ago. Uh, when we were doing that. So we must always be uh, submitting ourselves to the plain teaching of Scripture. And that's why I like your book, because it's giving us the tools to do that. And I think if it does nothing else than help Christians feel less afraid of the Scriptures and more inclined to test what they read in these books, you know, like Lindsay's and Tim LaHaye's books, to test them based on the Scriptures then we're helping Christians to grow up and um, take their faith more seriously and be more proactive in being part of the solution. And we're coming to a break. Stephen, thank you so much. Next, Steve Gregg will join Hank to talk about the Apocalypse Code. Steve Gregg is host of The Narrow Path radio broadcast and author of Revelation, Four Views, A Parallel Commentary. Here's what Steve Gregg had to say about the Apocalypse Code. And we quote, the Apocalypse Code is at once a manual on responsible hermeneutics and also a cogent refutation of the bizarre system of end-time speculation that has become the benchmark of orthodoxy in the minds of many evangelicals. Thus, Hank Hanegraaff has given the body of Christ two valuable books in one, both greatly needed in this age of biblical illiteracy and eschatological naivete, end quote. Order your copy of the Apocalypse Code today by calling 1-888-7000-CRI or by logging on to the World Wide Web 
at www.equip.org. Hank will open up this topic even further when the Bible Answer Man continues. So keep it right here. Is the Antichrist alive today? Will the temple be rebuilt? Are we living in the tribulation? What is the mark of the beast? Is Armageddon just around the corner? These questions and many others burn in the minds of millions. Breaking the code of the book of Revelation has become an international obsession. Yet the secret to understanding the last book of the Bible is not current events or recent history, but within the rest of the Bible. The Apocalypse Code by Hank Hanegraaff covers today's most asked prophecy questions. Much more, it reveals why answering them correctly matters so much today. Yet it does not offer another model of the end times. Rather, it presents a method by which you can read the Bible for all it's worth. The Apocalypse Code unravels the mystery of current and future events and paves a path in Scripture interpretation. The Apocalypse Code by Hank Hanegraaff. To order, call 888-7000-CRI. That's 888-7000-CRI. You'll also see it on our website at equip.org. The human heart. Its function is vital for our well-being, so we exercise it and take care of it. But the Bible often refers to the heart as the gateway and gauge of the soul. How do we take care of that? Research now supports the link between physical and spiritual health. In the pages of Total Heart Health for Men, Dr. Ed Young, along with two noted cardiologists, share that the key for men to have a truly healthy physical life is a healthy spiritual life. It's a stewardship issue that's crucial for men to address. And in our age of extreme makeovers, so much emphasis is put on the outer appearance. But in His Word, God is concerned about the health of the soul. Total Heart Health for Women is here to provide information and insights on how to speak to the unique spiritual aspects of a woman's heart. Total Heart Health for Men or Total Heart Health for Women by Dr. Ed Young. To order, call 888-7000-CRI or order online at equip.org. Outside of the holy words of Jesus and the Holy Spirit-inspired writings of the Bible, the words of men such as Augustine, Martin Luther, and Jonathan Edwards have most stirred the Christian church throughout history. I seek an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Now, these timeless works have been captured on CD by master storyteller Max McLean in a collection called Classics of the Christian Faith. This high-quality compilation contains five of the greatest works by five of the greatest leaders of church history. It will enhance your Christian walk and give you a new appreciation for our rich heritage. My conscience is captive to the Word of God. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. Classics of the Christian Faith CD Collection. Narrated by Max McLean. To order, simply call 888-7000-CRI. That's 888-7000-CRI. Find it on our website at equip.org. If you enjoy catching up on your reading during the summer, then here's a great idea for an enriching, edifying summer. Call CRI and order Max McLean's Classics of the Christian Faith on CD and the Go Bible MP3 audio player. On the Classics of the Christian Faith CD collection, Max McLean recreates some of the most inspiring written and spoken words in the history of the church. You'll enjoy scenes, sermons, and texts by church leaders like Martin Luther, John Bunyan, and Augustine. The Go Bible MP3 audio player is preloaded with the entire New King James Bible. It even contains a search feature that looks for content by book, by chapter, or even by individual verse. Both these resources are perfect companions for whatever plans you have this summer. Listen on the plane, in your car, at the beach, while camping, or just relaxing around the house. Make this a CRI summer. Call us now to order Max McLean's Classics of the Christian Faith on CD and the Go Bible MP3 audio player. Call 888-7000-CRI. Again, that's 888-7000-CRI. Or order them right now from your computer by going to www.equip.org. We're thankful that you're with us for this very special time in the life of the Bible Answer Man broadcast. Hank Hanegraaff has written what he feels is his magnum opus. The book is entitled The Apocalypse Code. Order your copy by calling 888-7000-CRI. 
If you're online, point your browser to www.equip.org and you'll see it there. And now, let's hear more about the Apocalypse Code from our host. Here's Hank Hanegraaff. The Apocalypse Code, now available to you through the Ministry of the Christian Research Institute. Just give us a call at 888-7000-CRI. You can also order online at equip.org or when you write me at Post Office Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. I'm utterly convinced that if the evangelical death march towards the end game of Armageddon is subverted. It will be because believers like you and I recommit ourselves to faithful exegesis, to mining what the Spirit has breathed into the Scriptures as opposed to superimposing our models onto the Scriptures. Again, The Apocalypse Code is a book designed to teach you how to read the Bible for all it's worth, and it is available right now. Resource consultants are standing by, 888-7000-CRI, or order online at equip.org. Joining me now, Steve Gregg. Steve Gregg is a great friend and encourager over the years, as Stephen Sizer has been. And he is the host of the Narrow Path radio broadcast, and he's the author of just a a tremendous book on Revelation, uh, titled Revelation, Four Views, a Parallel Commentary. He joins us now. Steve, good to have you with us. Hank, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be with you. You have been such an encouragement uh, to me over the years as I've pursued the writing of this book. Uh, This book ultimately is a book that I have had a passion to write for over 20 years. It was three years in the making. Uh, Talk to our audience about what you see as the value of this book as people learn to read the Bible for all it's worth. Well, I think there's there's two two problems probably that need to be addressed uh, among modern evangelicals. One is that they've been indoctrinated with a certain view of Bible prophecy, and the other is they've never really been taught how to read and interpret the Bible for themselves. And those two things together have simply guaranteed, I think, that uh, a shallow and naive view of prophecy is going to prevail uh, among evangelicals until, until they know how to read the Bible themselves, interpret it responsibly as it should be interpreted, and, uh, and then put together the prophetic material uh, in a responsible way, uh, and, and they have to be open to realize that they may have been taught a paradigm of prophecy that needs to be challenged. Your your book uh, addresses both those things, it seems to me. Primarily, it seems to teach how to responsibly approach prophetic literature in the Bible, uh, in Revelation in particular, but other, other parts of the Bible as well. And, uh, you know, the rules of interpretation that really are fairly common-sense rules that have been obscured by popular prophecy teachers. And then, of course, you do this in the context of critiquing a lot of the popular prophetic views and showing why, why they make their mistakes, because they don't interpret the Scriptures in a responsible manner. Steve, ideas have consequences. I mentioned this in my discussion with Stephen Sizer, and we looked at some of the consequences of ideas, particularly ideas that divide people on the basis of race. A lot of people do not realize that the dispensational model, which does directly say that God has two people, uh, that that is a theory that first was popularized in the 19th century. And as a result, not of reading Scripture, but rather imposing a view on the Scripture, namely that God has two people, and if God has two people, uh, then there has to be two distinct plans for those people, two distinct phases in the second coming of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, we have to then learn to read the Bible by rightly dividing the word of truth as to which passages deal with the one people and which passages deal with the other. That really does lead to a conundrum, doesn't it? Well, of course, yeah, the problem arose because of uh, John Nelson Darby's teaching that certain things in the Bible need to be taken literally all the time. Uh, And, of course, dispensationalists claim that they are the champions of literal biblical interpretation, of consistent literal uh, biblical interpretation. Uh, However, they're not. They, uh, They don't consistently interpret the Bible literally, but there are some things that they will never fudge on. 
and never budge from. And that is they must, they feel, interpret Israel in the Bible, whenever it mentions Israel, it has to be literal, uh, ethnic, national Israel. And when they do that, of course, they, they deviate from what the Church has taught from the Church Fathers on, uh, certainly the Church Fathers, and then through all of Church history, before Darby, it was taught that Israel in the Old Testament was the uh, type of the true Israel of God, and that the, they, are, they were the people of God in the Old Testament, at least those who had faith were, and that those who had faith in Israel came to Christ and became the core of the Church, which is now the true Israel. And this is what the Church taught forever and ever. Of course, dispensationalists uh, disdainfully refer to this as replacement theology, but uh, they only do that because they can't refute it. They have to come up with sort of a, a name to ridicule it. But the so-called replacement theology, which is not a very descriptive name of that theology at all, is really the theology of the Church throughout history. And, and you're right, in 1830, Darby introduced a new one, a new idea, which has taken over to a very large extent uh, among naive evangelicals. There are a lot of evangelicals that are looking forward to the blessed hope of a pre-tribulational rapture, and I fear that they have taken the great and glorious passages that have to do with the blessed hope of resurrection and actually co-opted those passages and used them for a pre-tribulational rapture, when those passages really do not have anything to say about a pre-tribulational rapture. But I think the real danger here, and we oftentimes fail to recognize this, is that this is a double-edged sword. The idea of a pre-tribulational rapture is that we get to go to a blissful state. The Jews that have been hoarded into the Holy Land are going to face a holocaust in which two-thirds of them are going to face a bloody massacre. Uh, so on the one hand, it sounds like we are being really nice to Jews if we take the position that they should have the Holy Land, but we oftentimes fail to really underscore the other part of the equation, and that is there is going to be a bloody holocaust for those, uh, those Jews. According yeah, to the dispensational system, which uh, makes you wonder how they could be seen as the friends of Israel that they are usually perceived to be. Uh, you know, I've, you, there's a lot of dispensationalists who have been putting a lot of money toward helping the Jews uh, rebuild their system and, and even toward a project of someday rebuilding the temple. And a lot of evangelical dollars have been spent to help uh, Russian Jews and Polish Jews and, and Jews from other parts of the world to, to migrate to Israel. And, and yet these same people who are paying the, the plane fare for the Jews to go to Israel are the ones whose theology teaches that once they get there, they're r right in harm's way, uh, you know, where an Antichrist is going to take over there and, and, and massacre them there. And I, I've always wondered, why would I want to pay the airfare for somebody to go to the place where I believe they're going to be doomed? That, but it's, it's part of the inconsistency of the whole dispensational system. They're, they think they are pro-Israel. I mean, if you would say that they are anti-Semitic, just because they, um, because they believe that two-thirds of it, the Jews are going to be wiped out, they would say, well, it's not, it's not we who approve of this. We don't approve of them being wiped out. This is God's plan. This is, this is prophesied in Scripture. We can't help it. But we at least are favorable toward them having their land again. You know? but, and then they would turn on a person like yourself or me and use the anti-Semite word when, in fact, uh, our position is not anti-Semitic at all. We believe that every Jew can be saved if they would turn to Christ. We believe that every Jew is loved by God, that God has not, uh, you know, blinded the race of Jews uh, because he doesn't want them to come into the kingdom. He wants every Jew and every Gentile to come into his kingdom. Uh, we are pro-Israel, not, not necessarily pro the state of Israel in terms of politics, but we are pro-Jew because we're pro-people. We, we know that God loves the world. And he wants every Jew and every Gentile to be saved. But there's no reason, biblically, to predict that the Jews must go back to their land in the end times and be wiped out there. But in view of the fact that dispensationalists believe that, it's remarkable how enthusiastic they can be about getting the Jews there. 
Talking to Stephen Gregg, he is just a great friend and an encourager, has written an endorsement for The Apocalypse Code, and The Apocalypse Code is available to you right now when you give us a call at 888-7000-CRI or when you log into the World Wide Web at equip.org. Thanks very much, Steve, for your contribution to the show today. Thanks for having me. Good to talk to you again. Good to talk to you. Looking forward to having you on on a future broadcast right here on the Bible Answer Man broadcast. Tomorrow, we're going to stay right here and start interviewing some of my other guests, Dr. Gary Burge, Dr. Paul Meyer, Gretchen Passantino, and we're going to play that on tomorrow's edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast. But as we close this broadcast, think about the fact that if America required people of African descent to carry special ID cards or to leave the country to make room For people of European ancestry, we would be condemned as a nation that promoted racism and apartheid and attempting to justify our actions on the basis of biblical prescriptions is even more unthinkable. As my guest in the first segment of tomorrow's broadcast will talk about Dr. Gary Burge, any country that de facto excludes a segment of its society from its national benefits on the basis of race can hardly qualify as democratic and far from facilitating race-based discrimination on the basis of our eschatological presuppositions we must be equipped to communicate that Christianity knows nothing of dividing people on the basis of race. That's all the time we have for today. The book, The Apocalypse Code, it's sure to make a difference in your life. Call us at 888-7000-CRI or just log into the World Wide Web and order online at equip.org. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow with more of The Apocalypse Code. Tomorrow, Hank welcomes Dr. Gary Burge, Dr. Paul Meyer, and Gretchen Passantino to the program. You don't want to miss tomorrow's Bible Answer Man because Hank will tell us more about his new release and how it will remove much of the guesswork you might have about the end times. Right now, the whole world stays glued to the news headlines, wondering what the future holds. As a believer in Christ, you know what the future holds, but it's crucial that your answers are well-reasoned and based on sound Bible doctrine. But that's where Hank's new work, The Apocalypse Code, can be of such help. So call 888-7000-CRI and ask for your copy. When you contact us, please remember to include a generous gift to help continue the work of CRI and the Bible Answer Man broadcast. The number again is 888-7000-CRI or order online at equip.org. Write us at P.O. Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, Zip 28271. The Bible Answer Man is on the air because truth matters. This is a broadcast production of the Christian Research Institute. Investors are concerned that there's more bad news. Calling for an end to U.S. military operations. The world is glued to the news headlines, anxiously awaiting what the future holds. So it's up to believers in Christ to be prepared to give well-reasoned answers about what lies ahead, based on sound Bible doctrine. That's why The Apocalypse Code by Hank Hanegraaff is such a vital resource for your library. It covers today's most asked prophecy questions and reveals why answering them correctly matters so much in today's world. The Apocalypse Code will resolve many questions regarding the mysteries of the end times and help you give an informed answer for the hope that is in you. All you really need to know about understanding Revelation is what the rest of the Bible says. So order your copy of The Apocalypse Code by Hank Hanegraaff. To order, call 888-7000-CRI. That's 888-7000-CRI. Or look online at equip.org.